We're ready to get into this bracket. Let's do it. Speaking of judging, um, what is this? This is the last. This is the last this one of it. the movie wars. Bracket. We're going to finish so, it up. We started movie this wars over a year ago. Episode. <laughs> so, movie drafts. What is this episode? Uh, five. Episode eight. Well, we'll call this what episode eight? The last bracket. Because it's yeah. five last. eight. Yeah. Yeah. The rise. So of- we're in our. I don't know what I want to call it. I don't know what we call it. We'll fix it in post. Episode eight. Oh my gosh, you can't just get some. There we go. (laughs) Which is a quote from a movie. I I know. I know. Okay. All right. Uh, Well, we're in the end game eight, so we can always say episode eight, end game. Um, uh, So we got our end game eight, our pub fiction four, and then our championship matchup. So. We've whittled, whittled it down, gone through four decades of movies, took it to 32 finalists, broke it down into our sweet 16 candles. Here we are at our end game eight. And by the end of this episode, we will have a movie wars champion. And uh, without further ado, I will hand it off to Jeff, our uh, incomparable questionnaire host, narrator, I'm usually very comparable, but uh, not tonight. <laughs> um, all right, we've got we've got eight eight individuals left in this. We're going to whittle this down. This has been fun. We've got three judges. That means first movie to five wins the matchup, and we go from there. I'm not going to do too much uh, getting into it or too much background, so we'll just start first one here. Our winner out of the Steven Spielberg region is Scott Pilgrim versus the world, a five seed up against a four seed out of the Scorsese region warrior. Um, One of us just recently saw warrior. Was that you Cameron? That was me. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Yeah. It's way better than it should be. Right. Right. All right. Good. Um, All right. We're going to jump right in with a, uh, with, with a question that I did not write. Eric Hoffman, Scott Pilgrim versus the world or warrior. Which one would you rather go to prom with? Ooh. Well, oh my gosh. Scott Pilgrim versus the world would be more fun to go to prom with. I mean, I might marry warrior, but if I'm just going to prom and I did go to prom with my future wife, but I also went to prom previous to that with a couple other girls tread lightly. (laughs) Uh, I mean, if it's just, Hey, you're going to prom. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys rent a limo. You have a nice after prom at the bowling alley. Yeah. It's a grand old time. But in either, in either case, there's fighting. There's going to be fights, whether oh, yeah. you go to the That's problem true. warrior or you go with Scott Pilgrim. But she, she's going to talk more. Scott Pilgrim's going to talk more than warrior will. Well, and you'll understand everything she says, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's not going to be so I'm not going to have to deal with her daddy issues. <laughs> Tom Hardy, not known for his enunciation. Okay, that's and, that's and, Pilgrim and, right and, out of the box. Uh, Jacob Brines, who would you rather go to prom with? Scott Pilgrim versus the world or Warrior? Yeah, uh, I, I mean Scott Pilgrim. You got a very muscly Tom Hardy, which is which is some really nice arm candy that you can bring in. You know, get the photo and and all that stuff. Uh, same thing with Joel Edgerton, but then you've got a recovering Nick Nolte, which is probably not the best th- thing is you he, want to bring to a high school. Is he recovering from being Nick Nolte? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to go with Eric. I think Scott Pilgrim versus the world would, would be a more fun time at prom. 
better prom date. Cameron, you got yeah, anything I different for so. us here? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is usually where the contrarian slides in right here. You're exactly right, Jeff. You're uh, actually... you're reading that perfectly. So <laughs> if if I'm going to the prom, it's it's just a prom, you know. I'm I'm not getting married to this girl. I'm looking for a diamond in the rough. I'm looking for a dark horse. And, you know, the older brother in Warrior shouldn't even been in, I don't know what to call it other than a kumite, but shouldn't even been there, got invited at the 11th hour. And I'm, I'm going to roll the dice on a dark horse prom date. Um, is it maybe going to have, you know, some unexpected twists and turns? Yeah. Could it possibly get ugly? Yeah, but I'll have a great story as a result of it. And, you know, when I've got a Cinderella story like that, I might end up marrying her. I'm going to roll the dice on Warrior. Well, yeah, and if a fight point, does break out at prom. Yeah, because Warrior had a surprise ending. I mean, Scott Pilgrim, there were no real big twists and turns there. It kind of it followed the video game format, mini boss, bigger boss, and then you get up to a... Um, Isn't that what prom is, though? It's... It's this packaged thing that's supposed to go a certain now, way. What if we uh, retcon one of the old questions that really upset Eric and we make it a gladiator themed prom? Does that change <laughs> things for you? Oh, then it's warrior hands down. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I chime in just I, for the record? And I know most of you know this. I, I was prom king in high school. Hey, you don't tell us enough. There's that's... no way that's true. <laughs> I had my my uh, my graduating class had 30, Jeff. So you were 30 or there were 30 people there were 30 seniors in my class 33 okay. maybe i also graduated 10th in my class which sounds impressive wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was in the top third i was that's less impressive but all right so we have two for scott pilgrim one for warrior two for one yep yeah. all right jake mm -hmm. we're gonna go with you first on this one um okay. jeopardy okay. style Internet questions for $800. Which movie is worth more on Zillow? Hmm. What is Scott Pilgrim versus the world? And why? Uh, I, I think it's, it's going to have a much fresher decor. It's going to have a lot more unique um, furnishings, uh, probably an open concept. You got a music room, definitely, uh, which is always fun. And uh, yeah, it's going to be bright. It's going to be airy. Uh, it's going to be in an upscale neighborhood. Uh, maybe not upscale. It's going to be in an up and coming neighborhood. There you go. Gentrified. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I like I like the use of real estate terms. There's one real estate term the judges are looking for in particular. So we'll see if that pops out. Cameron Lehman. So Warrior is a house with with good bones. Ooh, you know, it's just I was going to say that good bones. Got, That's a good one. Nick Nolte, and he was great actor in that. You know, he's been around for a long time. You know what you're going to get with with Warrior um you're gonna get great acting and but on the other hand and and when jeff originally pitched this movie to us he said it's a family film i said no way and i watched it i i wouldn't recommend watching it you know i've got a 12 year old so i wouldn't sit down and watch it with my 12 year old but you know maybe in a couple years i would sit down and, and watch it with him so yeah it's it's got good bones nice open floor plan you know if you really like to entertain you can entertain with um you know some blood and blood and guts that's a real crowd pleaser it's got a nice backyard <laughs> it like an octagon <laughs> it's got a nice backyard for a barbecue um here it is yeah it's a movie that yeah you might not watch with your 12 year old but you probably watch it with your 16 year old right right exactly yep all right eric hoffman what do you think well, I'm just <clears throat> I'm trying to uh, just make this as simple as possible. And it seems that I'm just doing a little research here. Um, 
I mean, housing prices in Toronto, where Scott Pilgrim takes place, How come I knew are you higher were than do this? Pittsburgh. <laughs> so location, location, location. But isn't it Philly, not Pittsburgh? Yeah, and isn't that in Canadian dollars? What are we doing here? <laughs> Right, let me get the conversion chart up. No, it's Pittsburgh. <laughs> are you um, looking at these in square meters or square feet? This is oh, very... that's a good point. <laughs> are we measuring in American or yeah? What are we doing here? But how come I felt like you were going to immediately go and actually start looking up housing prices? <laughs> well, that's what I'm. And we're in Toronto. I... I mean, Toronto and Pittsburgh are huge. You're used to doing the average for the whole city. Wait, Sounds like on. a guy that was top third in his class. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> I graduated tenth um top third exactly oh toronto ohio no not there but that's not what i'm comparing to toronto canada ontario could you make this take a little longer please i'm right. just i'm going the with stretch uh, make sure you we're stretching didn't he time. say he wanted to make he's this not doing the 10 second he's pause like i want to make this as answer. simple as possible and it's the hardest answer we've ever had. uh it, <laughs> toronto just the housing prices are higher I, i'm nearly certain although i can't find evidence of that but oh yeah Per price per square feet to buy apartment in city center. I feel good about it. A thousand, a thousand sixty six Canadian dollars to three hundred sixty Canadian dollars in Pittsburgh. Listen, it's going to be Scott Pilgrim. Okay, Scott Pilgrim. Uh, the judges were looking for the term on trend. You guys, uh, know what he, wow. he was on trend. Oh, Eric, you Bummer. landed that plane eventually. How so. many of us have a uh, or have had a uh, real estate license? Raise your hand. <laughs> still do all right um cameron we're going to start with you on this one we're, we're four to two right now which movie is easier for joe biden to forget is it scott pilgrim versus the world or is it warrior you, you, you're, you're gonna wheel that doting old man in and you're gonna you're going to have movie night. You're going to show him one movie on a Wednesday because what else does he have to do? You're going to show him the next one on a Thursday because the grownups are taking care of the country while he's, you know, <laughs> eating porridge or whatever. Which, which one is he going to get first? Joe Biden. I hope is... there is a comparable question for Trump somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. So Joe Biden is a man who loves to harken back to his blue collar roots back in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, working in the coal mine, you know, whatever he likes to, to talk about, about how tough he was. Um, so I think he's going to really, Warrior's going to hit home for him. Um, growing up on the mean streets of, of, of Scranton. And he, there's another town that he talks about a lot. What's it? What is it? I don't know, when he moved from Scranton to Delaware and I, yeah. that's all I know. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, there was a supposedly rough town in Delaware um, that, that he knew a lot. You're going to, you're going to upset our <laughs> Delaware viewers. They're going to come I, I at know. you. We just lost that. that with fine cheeses. I, just lost sound Delaware. like Cameron's too concerned about them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's going to remember, you know, the, the tough hardcore roots of his past supposedly. And he's going to forget Scott Pilgrim. I don't know of uh, Joe's musical background. I don't, he hasn't talked about it. He hasn't bragged about it. So he will more easily forget Scott Pilgrim. So I'm voting for Scott Pilgrim. Okay, so I'm going to twist this a little bit. Whichever one he is least, whichever one he's not going to forget gets the point. So you're saying he's not going to forget Warrior. He is not going to forget Warrior. Yes. All right, Scott Pilgrim. Thank you for that clarification because I was I was a little lost there. So okay. that helps. Yeah, no, he's you know let's be honest, he's not going to know what Scott Pilgrim. He's not going to have the foggiest notion. Of, it's just colors and sounds and <laughs> someone come wake me up when it's over. That's what's going to happen there. But all right, having said that, Eric, what do you think? Uh, I I think yeah, Cameron's Cameron's right here. Scott Pilgrim. I'd be curious to see how he or any politician, honestly, would describe Scott Pilgrim versus the world after watching it. Just trying to explain it to people around them would be kind of humorous. Uh, Warrior, he, that's the one he's going to remember, he's going to recall. He might superimpose his own life onto it. And, you know, it might not be 
Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton. It might be Joe Biden and Corn Pop in there. So you're right. Is he's going to think Pop. it's real. And it was Corn, about him. Corn Pop was the, the gang leader that apparently he, when he was very young, he told the story of uh, confronting this gang leader at the pool that he worked as a lifeguard at. Huh. Just an odd story. It was Joe Biden at his finest. It was the most <laughs> rambling, talking about leg hair in the water. And uh -huh. yeah. Everywhere. It was beautiful. All right, Jacob Rines, we are tied up four to four. It's all this up to you. all on you. So this is Which a tough question. Here for Joe Biden to forget. And the one that gets the point is the one he's going to remember. So Scott Pilgrim, okay. Warrior. So is he going to remember Warrior or Scott Pilgrim more or better? Um, it's a tougher question than I thought it would be because I agree in, in general with Cameron and Eric on that. He grew up in Pennsylvania. It was a blue collar town and warrior is all about blue collar um you know living i mean nick nolte's in that small row house that he's been in forever and, and then his dad or his son comes back from war and then his other son is a teacher trying to make a buck um and all that stuff is i think would speak to joe biden in his past the teacher grind However, man what the teacher what grind say? well and with his wife being an <laughs> yeah, educator a yeah his, his wife being teacher. a teacher yeah, she would, she would resonate with that. But, um, and so I, I think, you know, in, especially with Joel Edgerton's character trying to, you know, raise the family and stuff like that, I think he could see himself in that regard. But there's a lot of movies out there about fighting <laughs> and boxing. And for a near octogenarian to distinguish one from another may be a harder trick than you think. <laughs> um, and, I, I think that might go against um, him remembering Warrior for that case. Scott Pilgrim, um, he wouldn't be able to tell this. You know, somebody said, hey, what was Scott Pilgrim about? As you said, he would give a long and colorful story about it that would probably be nowhere near the mark of what the movie is actually about. But I'll be honest, I can't really tell you what that movie is about. And that's OK. <laughs> Still a great movie. Um, no, but, but he would definitely describe Three's Company. And say that that was Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> and John Ritter. Yeah, it'd yeah. be great. But so I, I, I think Scott Pilgrim is so different and so out there that I think you could say, well, it would stick in his mind more. I don't know what it was, but I just saw the weirdest movie I've ever seen. Um, so I, I'm that, all that to say is it's this is a tougher choice and initially at first i was just like cameron yeah he'd watch warrior or he'd remember warrior um hmm. i'm on the edge of my seat i know the tension is palpable sorry i'm really trying to <laughs> suss this out what would he remember better hmm if you're asking me which one could he recall better? I would say Warrior. So I guess I'm going to go Warrior. I think he'd be right. able to wow. recall that the was like... that story better than Scott Pilgrim. That's like the whole Formula One season coming out of the last lap. That was amazing. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Jockeying for position. All right. Eric, fill it in. Warrior wins. Done. We're going to go. Can I just say, there is so much more thought that goes into Jake and especially Eric's responses than mine. I'm all, you know, right off the cuff. This is that the first is thing not that comes my to my experience mind. at all with you, Cameron. Eric, Eric's going to take you on a journey. Mm. Well, unless question. it's about housing prices in Toronto, and then <laughs> no idea where he's going. But all right, next matchup out of the John Hughes region, we had Ghostbusters. And out of the Christopher Nolan region, a personal favorite, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. In my opinion, the greatest movie of the 80s. I've probably said that many times. Um, Cameron Lehman, let's start with you. Which movie would be a better scented candle? Ghostbusters or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? So when I think of 
I, I heard it on a commercial once and I assume it's true. I think they were trying to sell me uh, cologne or Axe body spray or something. But I heard one time that scent is the strongest sense tied to memory. Yes. So, you know, when I, when I think of Ghostbusters, it's an 80s movie. And honestly, I, I don't know how much I've seen of that. And what I have seen of that has been years and years and years. It's got to be one hell of a scented candle to make me hearken back that far. Um, and it's going to be blurry. However, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I can think of, you know, they're, they're sitting out by the pool at the end of the scene when, when Cameron kind of goes nuts. I know my way around a pool. The scent of chlorine would uh, bring up a lot of good memories. Um, he drives his dad's, uh, Cameron's dad's hot rod around. And the Ferrari, California, the Ferrari, California. And, you know, you're going to be burning rubber. You're going to be burning gas. Those are smells that all of us can, can picture and feel in our minds. Um, you know, you've been in that hot, stuffy room at three o'clock waiting for the, the last minute of the day to click over while the teacher is drabbing on and on and on. Cameron, um, I don't think my answer's through, Layman, at the wheel, <laughs> folks. <laughs> for all those reasons, I choose Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Ferris. All right. Uh, going counterclockwise on my screen, Jacob Rines. Okay. Which movie would make a better scented candle? <clears throat> Ghostbusters or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? So I, I like where Cameron was taking that. I think the Ferris Bueller's Day Off is, is like a summer vacation. It's the 4th of July. It's all those, you know, kind of good end of the school year feelings and vibes, you know, it's like you said, it's a day at the pool. Um, it's a parade and there's sparklers, it's good food. It's all of that um, mixed together. Ghostbusters is a little tougher scent to cobble together because it's, you know, you got slimes, slimer and you got ooze and ectoplasm and all that stuff. You got New York at its dirtiest, at its right? 80s. The 80s is not a good decade for New York scent wise. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine the sulfur from the gates of hell being opened up on a skyscraper is a good scent either. The only really redeeming scent is when the Stay Puft marshmallow gets yeeted into non existence mm. and then it's like a s'mores campfire. But <laughs> uh, until then, I think Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a better scent overall. I, that would be a scented candle I could buy with some confidence. Ghostbusters would be a lot dicier. So I'm going Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. Eric Hoffman, what do you got? If you need and you are so insecure that you need to have scents like, like if you're the kind of guy that you need everyone to know that you love the smell of napalm in the morning, then like the scent of sulfur it's, in your house or the, the smell of like you uh what's what's the what's the chemical you smell after firing a a firearm cordite something cordite sure. um you know that that kind of that stings the inside of your nose but you know it has to do with something manly just happened um the smell of sweaty coveralls covered in ectoplasm and slime like if you need that scented candle then you'd go with Ghostbusters. Outside of yes, the the marshmallow scent, the the s'mores scent that would actually be pretty good. But you've got to mix the whole movie in, right? So mm -hmm. outside of that, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's high school. It's sexy. It's fast cars. It's leopard print jackets. Like it's upper middle class. There's good smells. It's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's it. That gets it. No brainer. You're fascinating, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, we're going to start with you on this one. Um, two people in the world 
untethered by such simple concepts as the truth would be Rachel Maddow and Donald Trump. <laughs> Having said that, Eric, which movie does Rachel Maddow claim that Donald Trump watches every morning? Is it true? Is it not true? Probably doesn't matter. This is CNN we're talking about. Ghostbusters or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Um, she probably. I, I think she'd claim it was Ferris Bueller's Day Off simply because it's just not, it's believable enough that he would watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off because he enjoys fun. He enjoys kind of the wealth. Um, he doesn't like New York to be slimed over per se, uh, unless he was somebody who was so devoted to like disaster movies of his own town. Um, he's going to be watching Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And then that's going to be her story. All right. That's Rachel's story. And she's sticking to it until a congressional committee tells her otherwise. Jacob Rines, what do you think? Okay, so this is interesting because I think the the appeal to Donald Trump for Ferris Bueller's Day Off would be it's a you know a young kid doing whatever he wants and totally getting away with it, and there are some suspect things that Mr. Trump has done that are kind of coming up to catch him right now, um, and so I would say. That would be appealing to Ferris Bueller. He did whatever he wanted. He crafted these perfectly well done lies and totally got away scot free all the while his sister is harping at him. Um, just so frustrated that he's doing whatever he wants. <clears throat> the appeal to Ghostbusters to Trump, I think, would be <laughs> um, I, <laughs> when Cameron, when you said Joe Biden might write himself into the story of Warrior. I could see Donald Trump writing himself into the story of Ghostbusters. In the 80s, it was terrible. There was ghosts everywhere. Uh, and me and Venkman, uh, we got on it. We took care of it. We fixed it, cleaned the whole city up. I could see him doing that or saying, I don't know if you saw the story. New York is being overrun with ghosts right now. I just saw it. It's totally true. It was on the TV. Um, and so I could see the appeal for Ghostbusters there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go Ghostbusters. Because I think he could run with that and he would love it. Some plausibility to back up Rachel's insane claims. Good Cameron, answer. what do you think? Which movie does Rachel Maddow claim that Donald Trump watches every morning? Ghostbusters or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Jake makes a great point. I really like his answer. But what I can't get out of my head is Rachel Maddow. She hates Donald Trump. She hates him so much. It's bad. And she has dedicated the last few years of her life to absolutely try and try to ruin him. Meanwhile, Ferris's sister has done the same. She's going to great lengths and you can just see her seething throughout this. Everybody loves Trump. Everybody loves Viewer. Everybody, you know, and he's got that stigma of not a real working hard working guy oh he just won it because he was rich and he's good in front of a camera um when ferris is leading the show in the parade and the whole city's going nuts for him that is the epitome of what donald trump loves he's an absolute egomaniac and he has many foils that are trying to bring him down um yeah rachel maddow is yelling and screaming saying that Trump starts his day with Ferris Bueller's day off. Well thought out. All right. That's five for <laughs> Ferris Bueller's day off. You can, uh, you can put it in as the victor here, Eric. That brings us down to uh, Quentin Tarantino region. We have anchor man, the sole number one seed to make it through the, uh, the carnage and the James Cameron region. We have Empire Strikes Back, a movie that was taken in the last round of the 80s draft, but we all have, and we can all see right now that that was way too low. Cameron, we're going to start with you. Anchorman or The Empire Strikes Back? Which movie is part of the problem? Oh, 
Huh. The problem. Okay. So what is the problem? Indeed, that with is the world nowadays. Part of the question, right? Um yeah, you know, with, with everything that's gone on in the world in the last two years, you know, I can't help but side with the rebel scum and, and trying to change things for the better. It's you know, if you're if you're rooting for you know the if if you're not rooting for the rebels, you're wrong. Um, meanwhile, Anchorman, misogyny, um, you know, drunkenness on the job, littering, uh, littering, yes, <laughs> um, throwing the burrito out. It was was just terrible, especially with California's uh, environmental laws. Yeah, man. Uh, out, outright violence, you know, stabbing somebody in the chest with, uh, with a trident. Not on my watch, everybody. Not on my watch. I'm choosing um, Anchorman as part of the problem. Anchorman gets one point for being part of the problem. Eric Hoffman, what do you think? Anchorman or The Empire Strikes Back? Which well, the Empire Strike, of the problem? Strikes Back is uh, <clears throat> depicts nothing less than a fascistic dictatorship in the form of an empire that once was a republic. That's a problem. <laughs> but Anchorman is, he is the mainstream media. And some might say that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is a tough one. How are you going to bring order to a galaxy, Eric? Come on, all this fascistic, you're just... <laughs> you realize the amount of real estate, the law and order you have to impose? Hold on, let me eggs, check real man. estate prices of Coruscant versus Tatooine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can tell you that right off the top of my head. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not sure that... When I say mainstream media, I mean, it's San Diego. There's no news there. Uh, he's not He's not CNN. He's not Fox News. He's just some classy station in San Diego. Um, I think The Empire Strikes Back is a bigger part of the problem. Well, you're ugly. Jake, what do you think? Anchorman or The Empire Strikes Back? What's part of the problem? Uh, it, it's interesting because I was thinking along the same wavelength as Eric there that the Empire Strikes Back is the government failing, in this case, an entire galaxy uh, and forcing uh, friends to be, betray friends uh, like Calrissian did to Han. Uh, you know, things don't go well in that movie for the rebels and you could say things are not going well right now in America or even around the world um, <clears throat> for a lot of people, especially when you're talking about how governments are reacting to certain things. Anchorman, as Eric said, is, you know, is the media. And as we all know frequently that the networks have street brawls that, you know, all the time. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, but the interesting thing about Anchorman that makes me say it's not part of the problem is that Ron Burgundy, if he is representing us in this, he has some growth and he becomes, I'm not going to say he doesn't become any, but he becomes less chauvinistic, less misogynistic. He, he has uh, an arc there that shows him becoming a better person. And so in that sense, I would say that's not part of the problem. That's what we should all hope for. And so he'd be part of the solution. Um, whereas the Empire, especially in this movie, if you were to pick Return of the Jedi or A New Hope, maybe not. But I think in this case, the Empire is part of the problem. Well, uh, Darth Vader does, you know, to the rest of us, become a dad in The Empire Strikes Back, right? No, well, he not announces. really. I think, it's when he, it's announced. Announced. Yeah. I think yeah. he, he has the results He's... to a paternity test. I would say <laughs> yeah, he becomes he's... a dad in Jedi. Yeah, Maury, <laughs> you know, Maury releases it. You are the father, and then he cuts his son's hands off. He's so, like, I don't know, I knew that. I don't know. I that's a told dad. You that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I haven't really been around for the kid, but yeah, I'm his dad. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so you're the part of the problem. You're going Empire, Jacob. Yep. All right. Um, and and just because of by... bloated bureaucracy, right? Yeah, it's just bureaucracy. That's it. Sorry, Eric. Do you have something to say? <laughs> I did. I'm done. Okay, that's great. Um, Jake brought back a classic from the uh, from the Ides of March Madness, and we're going to throw that in here. We got Anchorman or The Empire Strikes Back. Eric, I like hearing you talk the least tonight, so we'll start with you. Um, which one? Which, which movie would you rather have the characters from? babysit your kids now 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 both movies have probably good babysitters and probably bad veronica corningstone probably a marvelous babysitter brian fantana not so much do i empire boba fett unlikely but obi-wan you can leave obi-wan on a planet just to raise a kid from the distance so so is it is it you know the 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 median of all the characters or is it i'm picking a character from each movie or the question is which one would you rather have the characters babysit your kids <clears throat> anchor man because at least they'll have you know the fun uncle type people around there's nobody genociding anybody in anchor man so and I doubt somebody's going to stab my child in the heart with a trident. So you don't know that you're making a huge assumption, my friend. <laughs> I'm making a huge assumption. <laughs> I'm guessing they're less likely to do that. Huge assumption. All right, Anchorman, uh, Cameron Layman. What do you think? Which which movie would you rather have the characters from? Babysit your children. Anchorman, The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, you're going to take some risks either way you know there's there's mass genocide on one side and there's you know horrible accidents that occur on the other side um you know i've i'm very much gut when i when i go with trust do i trust this person do i not and i i googled just characters faces in each of them and you know what face stands out to me is lando calrissian that is a face that is just a million dollar smile and I'm looking at it and I'm like, he can, he can babysit my kids. Um, Yoda, you know, very, very wise. Um, Princess Leia's got some, got some guile. Um, Han Solo, very responsible, uh, super handsome, very symmetrical face. Uh, Ch- even, even if it's Chewbacca and R2-D2, they're going to have a good time. You know, my kids are might be taking on some some crazy adventures or whatever but it's all in good fun with chewbacca and r2d2 d3po trust him obviously there's some opportunity for evil there but i got that that's a hell of a lineup for star wars so um i'm going empire strikes bite back going empire hey but but before we get to jake and his well thought out beautiful answer um i've heard genocide come up a couple times with the empire who were they who were they trying to eradicate i think that's the destruction of alderaan but that was in a new hope right it's still one of their intentions though right I, I, yeah, no Ty, they tyrants don't want to power. power they're not power. they're not out to kill all the sand people or all the they yeah because they, 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 they just want order eric it's just order. Ty, tyrants just want to rule for your own good just the you party know, they, of law and order they're the best people for the job and they're going to, I'm they're not gonna saying, I'm right. not saying they're good guys. Of course, of course, but maybe they're not genocidal. I'm just saying words have meaning. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> words have meaning. Okay. Having said that, Jake, uh, let's, let's get to you. You've had some time to think it over. Which, which movie has the characters that you're going to leave around with uh, your two beautiful children, Anchorman or the empire strikes back. It, it, it's Anchorman. Okay. Because let's think, if we leave the kids, the, the, we need to rewatch Empire Strikes Back. If you think any of those guys, except for maybe Chewbacca, would be a good babysitter. Yoda's very much like, figure it out for yourself. You're in a swamp. Go lift the plane. Hey, he's a four-year-old. Just chill. Darth Vader already has a bad history of killing kids. That was his whole shtick in, uh, what was it, the third movie? Revenge of the Sith? Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. He killed he all killed the, all the younglings. The emperor 
is going to constantly be trying to turn your kids to the dark side. And uh, Lando Calrissian betrayed his best friend and got him frozen in carbonite, which maybe if your kids are being a little rowdy, you want him in carbonite for a bit and, you know, de them when the parents get back home. But And he was trying to tap Leia the whole time. Yeah, that's true. So he'd be that boyfriend that the babysitter's there and he's like just trying to make out and said, oh, go eat some pizza. I, no, it's Anchorman. Yes, yes, I know Ron Burgundy's got some issues. Ronica Corningstone is there to balance him. Brick, the guy's got the IQ of my children already so he can relate to them personally on that level. And uh, <laughs> Champ kind of just want to play sports all the time. So I, I got to go. I got to go Anchorman for babysitters. All right. I like it. Um, Jake, we're going to start with you on this. Uh, I mean, we're three to three. It's a decisive question. Anchorman. Oh, Eric started typing some stuff. I in did. There. I thought we were ahead of it. I had to back up. No. Um, <clears throat> Anchorman or the Empire Strikes Back. Which movie has Obama been watching? <laughs> uh that's a great question um i don't think for some reason i feel like obama would watch anchorman for the fashion i feel like he would see the fashion that that they you know ron burgundy's got and brian fantana's got and like say i like that that's got that 70s vibe i think he would want to go back to that a little bit now that he's out of office he already got blasted for the tan suit fiasco when he was in office. And so I think he would see the, the fashion of, of the anchor man and be like, I like that movie. Um, and he'd say, obviously it's problematic. There's some things that Ron Burgundy does that I do not care for, but I think he would like that movie overall. I don't see him watching empire a lot. Yeah, you're right. He's a loser. All right, Eric, what do you think? <laughs> well, Which I movie guess has Obama been watching? It depends on Anchorman. the situation. Is he, is he preparing for a press conference where he has to, you know, gain the public's trust through his speech and make sure everyone knows he thinks they're classy and, and yes, like Jake said, the fashion, or is he preparing to go down in the bunker and cross another name off his kill list with the drone strike? Yeah. Order up some drone strikes. Death Depends Vader style. So <laughs> push the button. Boop. So and I don't feel like I should, I feel like it should be my responsibility as somebody who pursues history, not to let a president off the hook for their mistakes. So I think he's been watching Empire Strikes Back. Empire. It's a quizzical Cameron look, Layman, Jake. Last but not least. It's a very confusing answer. I just <laughs> trying to process. Here, four to four. That's okay. On this thing, Anchorman or The Empire Strikes Back? Which keep, movie has Obama been watching? Keep it under two minutes, Cameron. You know, there's there's oh, one thing I've learned. Glass houses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna take you on a journey here, so so stay yeah, with me. Look, look what you've done. Look what you've done. That I hope. was a good one, Jeff. That was good. So, if, if there's one thing I've learned from hanging out with Jake and Eric over the years is even if you don't really feel strongly about something, you pick a side and you absolutely die on that hill. You fight tooth and nail, even though you might disagree Never with your that. stance. You need to stand so firm and make so many insults of the other side that they can't possibly prove you wrong. So this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Barack Obama. When I, when I think of him, he is all about the show, all about appearing a certain way. And I don't, he does his little book list every year of, he makes sure that they're very racially diverse books from, you know, authors of, of every color and creed and, and all of that. Um, he likes to he's great with his speeches, you know, the press conferences and say the right thing and do the right thing. He's always talking about being on the right side of history. And I'm with Jake when, when he says there are some problematic things in Anchorman 
but that is a simpler time in San Diego. Panda watch was news. <laughs> um, sharp, sharply dressed suits, unique you, New York, how now brown cow, all of those things. I see Obama doing that behind the scenes when he's getting ready. We don't know. Maybe he's taken a quick couple drinks of scotch before he goes in front of the cameras. Um, so yeah, you know, the more I talk myself into this, he's been watching Anchorman, he's taking notes, and he's learning how to manipulate the public much the same way that Ron Burgundy did. Well, and Obama, it's interesting you said that because Obama famously brought a, you know, he was called the teleprompter president. Um, because he was so many, he was always using a teleprompter. <laughs> and that's Ron Burgundy's big foible is that you, you know he reads it exactly as it's on the teleprompter. <laughs> so I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> it's a good uh, that's, that's a funny. good point, Jake. I like that. All right. Um, I was torn. I love, love, love both of those movies. So I, if I was rooting for one, I couldn't tell you which one, but Anchorman squeaks out a five to four win over Empire. Bringing us to our last Endgame 8 matchup out of the Stanley Kubrick region. We have the Shawshank Redemption. I just watched it again last week. It's still a great movie. Uh, up against Office Space, a movie that we used to watch all the time at T-Mobile. Whenever they would lay everybody off, we'd all get together and watch Office Space. So every couple of years, we'd saddle up over at Office House and watch that. So um, Eric Hoffman, the Shawshank Redemption or Office Space? Which one would Dr. Phil prefer? He doesn't like nonsense. He gets really irritated with nonsense from what I understand. There's actually an episode where the guy who did bum fights came on and he dressed as Dr. Phil and it really upset Dr. Phil. He's not going to appreciate office space. He's going to read a lot into the Shawshank Redemption. So he's going to prefer Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank it is. Cameron, what do you think? Yeah. Which one, which, which one of these movies is Dr. Phil going to prefer? The Shawshank Redemption or Office Space? So... When I think of Dr. Phil, um, he's having that, that hard conversation with the family. You know, he's talking with the teenager. The, was the Catch Me Outside girl, was that in? Uh, I believe okay. so. Yeah, it was. So that was Dr. Phil, the, the Catch Me Outside girl. And he kind of anointed himself as the guy, I'm going to have this hard conversation. I'm going to set him straight one way or another now this isn't to say that he's perfect in any way but you know between the captain hadley and the the warden in shawshank you know they can kind of misconstrue it and and lie to themselves enough to say hey i'm making the world a better place through discipline um so I think that that would strike a chord with, with uh, Dr. Phil is they would see themselves or he would see himself maybe as the warden or maybe as the captain. Old school, tough love. All right, you're going Shawshank. Yep. Jake, what do you got? Uh, I feel like Dr. Phil would pick office space because office space is basically an episode of dr phil the problems are ridiculous it starts with the guy and his girlfriend getting taken to the psychiatrist and then psychiatrist dies um under hypnotism and then you've got these problems like uh ron livingston's character i can't remember his name right now um getting all upset at jennifer aniston thinking that she's sleeping with his boss that's a Dr. Phil episode right there. Okay. You got the stress of uh, the guy that has the, he's going to kill himself and he makes the jump to conclusions, Matt. Uh, <laughs> you got Jennifer Aniston losing her mind over flair at her job. I, 
I mean, there's a lot of stuff there that I think I would see on a Dr. Phil show and go, yeah, that seems about right. Uh, so the stapler gonna, alone would make a great the stapler episode. alone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, and, and, and Milton, the stapler, uh, and that is desk or his cube mate, her radio is up too loud and it's at the wrong time of the morning and he needs you know, all that stuff would be a Dr. Phil episode. So I, I'm going off his space. Can I change my answer? I suppose. What do you mean? Um, you, well, you gotta have a good reason why. I mean, everything Jake just said, he convinced me. Yeah, those are all the details. I need. I'll there allow it. Okay. Um, Eric, we're going to finish with you on this last one so you have a chance to hear everybody else's opinion first. Um, Jacob, Shawshank Redemption or Office Space, which likely has more websites devoted to it? Mm. I think this is tough. You get Shawshank Redemptions, a very powerful movie, but Office Space, a little more topical and timely. Uh, which one do you think claims more real estate on the internet? Well, Shawshank is an all-time great movie based on a great book. And that has got to give it a really good head start. Uh, office space is very memeable there's a lot of good memes you can pull from office space i don't know how many websites there are that are dedicated to office space um surprise derek's not looking that up right now (laughs) i'm (laughs) he's gonna wait till it's his turn and then start looking it up um (laughs) i yeah, I think I think Shawshank. It's it's too great of a movie to not have a wildly dedicated fan base. Um, and I, I love Office Space. I think it's fantastic, but I just don't think it has the zeitgeist that Shawshank does. Ooh, Good zeitgeist. Word. Good word. All right. Um, I can tell Eric's still doing some research. So Cameron, let's hear your yeah, take on this. Which likely has more websites devoted to it? The Shawshank Redemption or Office Space? So when the internet first came out and everybody was all excited about it, this is going to revolutionize the way that we consume information. And it's going to be the information superhighway. And we're going to be all so productive and so great. And so, you know, this is going to change the world. However many years later, 25, 30 years later, yeah, the world is a lot different thanks to the internet. Um, But it doesn't look like the way we think it would. As as great as the internet is, we're all still sitting around watching cat videos. We're all still, you know, sharing memes on Facebook and wasting time on, on the internet. And you know, Shawshank is not a waste of time movie. This is heavy stuff that talks about, you know, human nature and justice busy being living served. Or get busy dying. Heavy, heavy stuff. Office space is shenanigans and, you know, everyday life and, you know, funny occurrences that happen and, and people that are caricatures. And, yeah, you know, if we're all honest, we spend all our time on cat videos and garbage on YouTube. So I think office space takes up more space on the internet than Shawshank. All right. Well reasoned. All right, Eric Hoffman. Yeah, that was a very you, good answer. You, you've had plenty of time to sort this out. You've heard other people's opinions. We got one on either side. No one knows where you're going with this. Which likely has more websites devoted to it, Shawshank or office space? Jake mentions Shawshank Redemption being in the zeitgeist of the, uh, I guess, the popular culture world. Is However, that Yiddish or German? Can we talk about German. that word for a sec? Was that, that low a- German or high German, the, your accent? It was... I don't know. I was looking that up. Okay. Pennsylvania Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> we owe it to our fans to be accurate, okay, Jake? So take it Sorry. easy. Sorry. Janice Sorry. is always watching. Always judging, yep. always watching. <laughs> but the office 
has more of a cult following. The Ooh. office or, or office, sorry, space. office space has more of a cult following than the Shawshank Redemption, in my opinion. I think Shawshank Redemption is great, but Office Space um, is, is a film with more of a cult following. Therefore, it's going to have more fan websites devoted to it than Shawshank Redemption. That's a good point. Office Space it is. All right. Eric, we're going to start with you on this one. What's our score? Um, our score is four to two right now. Office space over Shawshank. Mm. Leading us into this next question. Eric Hoffman, the Shawshank Redemption or Office Space? Which would be better off if converted into a TV series? Bear in mind, we, we currently live in the golden age of television. The Sopranos kicked off a time where top writers and top talent would go to tv and we're in that we're, we're in that time right now great stuff on tv which one of these two is going to be better when you turn it into a tv series i think in some ways uh both films have been turned into a tv series i'd say shawshank redemption in some effect became something like prison break which my issue well okay let me get to that in a bit in office space i'd say the office is kind of a the serialized version of office space, right? You, the, the antics of the office. Office space becoming a television show is going to be more successful simply because there are more stories to tell in an office over a greater period of time, say a season or 10. The Shawshank Redemption, much like Prison Break, I remember seeing previews for the, the TV show Prison Break. Once you get out, what else is there, right? Like Shawshank Redemption, there's a very clear goal in mind to get out and absolve yourself of your crime. Well, you can go extent. back, you could do some backstory, maybe the authority yeah, find them I, down I, there in Mexico. Just, you're starting to stretch things out a bit beyond the redemption takes place at Shawshank. I, I don't think there's you're, you have as much runway to go with the Shawshank Redemption as office space. It's probably um, just called Shawshank the Musical. So maybe. <laughs> but uh, in order to become a TV show, I'd say it, it Office Space becomes a better TV show. Glee meets Shawshank. All right, Office Space. Um, we've got a winner, but Jake, uh, do, do, do you have any thoughts on that? Which one's a better TV series? Uh, I agree with Eric. I think The Office is the serialized version of Office Space, and it's one of the last great sh like uh, sitcom shows that we'll probably ever have uh so yeah i i think we we have that that show and it's a really great show agreed all right office space just ran away with that over shawshank nobody saw that coming all right we're down to the pulp fiction four guys we got warrior anchorman ferris bueller's day off and office space three comedies Cameron, we're going to start with you, and we're going to start with Warrior versus Anchorman. Which one would you rather elect president? Warrior or Anchorman? Warrior or Anchorman. Um, obviously, I have to choose one character of each of those movies. Um. Gosh, on, on or, one or, hand. Or, or maybe it's just, it's, it's a whole administration. Maybe it's the whole cabinet. All right, okay. Um, if, if it's time to have a male or a female president in this country, you can't do a lot better than Veronica Corningstone. Poised. Um, That's a great point. <laughs> you know, she's, she's good in a meeting. She'd be very decisive. You know, I would trust her with the nuclear codes. Um, yeah, you know, maybe the maybe it's time for a woman's touch in the Oval Office. You know, we've we've reached a point in this country where Veronica, she's she's overcome a lot. You know, she's she's thankful to be there right before her her first show. Um, you know, she's whispering to herself, and this is for all the little girls out there, and she's psyching herself up. She's gonna take it seriously, and um, she's gonna be poised and, and polished and all of the things that you think of for a president. Um warrior jacob brines 
I, I hang on, hang on. Hey, I, I gotta oh, go. He's still working through it. My, my thought fine. on Warrior. Oh, I thought you just announced your your choice. I, I, I'm sorry. I, on one hand, there's, there's <laughs> he explained why a woman would be a great president. <laughs> just went Warrior, and now he's just gonna take her out at the. <laughs> but we're not there yet. <laughs> I'm not ready. Nick Nolte. <laughs> so for Warrior, um, I'm having a hard time picking who would be my president there um i think it would be the war hero brother and i say that because he's a little dangerous um you don't cross him in foreign policy he's got the nuclear codes he's not afraid to use them he'll drone strike you out of nowhere and he has an affinity for protecting his guys um he's been in battle and he knows that you don't do that lightly um but man, I think he would make a lot of enemies as well. It's time. It's time we had a female president, Veronica Corningstone, for for 2024. I'm going Anchorman. Can I say I love that you 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 surprised me with that pick? Not because you picked Anchorman, but because you picked Veronica Corningstone as the president, where I think everybody instinctively assumed for Ron Burgundy. And I like that you flipped it on its head like that. I do. I because it totally influenced my answer. So okay. Well, okay. That's a nice segue, Jake. What do you got? Do it. Well, I was leaning this way and then Cameron solidified it with Veronica Corningstone for, for POTUS. Uh, Ron Burgundy, you can put him in. You know, he can be the VP and you know he can go, I don't know, play with his many leather bound books and, and oh, all that he's stuff. He's a and, great VP, right? Yeah. 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 He's Good exactly call. what you need for VP. Uh, you know, and, and then yeah, I think you can make a pretty decent cabinet out of the Anchorman cast with Veronica. And he is the, the cinematic equivalent of Joe Biden. I mean, <laughs> oh God, that is so beautiful. Him as the vice president. Yeah, he's I'm up there. He can't do anything. He doesn't have any power. Burgundy has no power. Mm. He just gets up there. He looks, he speaks into the teleprompter and he gets taken off the stage. And then that's it. Whereas Veronica is the one making the actual decisions. Right. He's Rick, really only, Ron's really only got the power to screw something up, which he will absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. So you keep him in his VP house and you don't let him out until, you know, right. you need him for a photo. Well, someone writes the wrong thing on the teleprompter and then <laughs> World War Three. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I like it. it. Right. I, I, Anchorman. Eric, what do you think, Mr. Contrarian? So I, I, I did, t I'm taking a long, hard look at warrior. We have Nick Nolte, um, you know, a, a former, you know, a recovering alcoholic who's relapsed. We have Tom Hardy with the, you know, with the combat vet with obvious PTSD and anger issues. And then Joel Edgerton with, uh, you know, backed into a corner financially willing to do whatever it takes to keep his family afloat. And we've done all those as president before. So with mixed success, um, I think the Anchorman team as a team just make a fantastic Oval Office and, and cabinet. Uh, it makes me harken back to West Wing. I mean, just drop those characters into West Wing and I'd be thrilled. So I, Veronica Corningstone is uh, president. Fantastic. Go with it. Any of them could do it. I'd be happy anchor man and and not only that you know when you're on the campaign trail Wes Mantooth and his team from channel three or whatever could make the great opposite side you know the opposing political party and you know what brick for uh secretary of defense because he stabbed somebody in the chest with a trident right yeah I mean that's well, I'm pretty want. sure in good, the uh in the news post script is. to anchor man didn't he end up working in the Bush administration brick Hamlin he did yeah, Did he? very successful career in the Bush administration. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so we we have uh, we have yeah. All right, so that. we got Anchorman running the uh, running the free world. I love it, um, Eric. We're going to start with you on this one: Warrior or Anchorman? Which one would look better with a mullet? <laughs> I think there are some strong candidates in both of these. Um, yes. The, the 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 mullet has kind of come and gone through fashion throughout I've history. Got, and I've got some students who are working their mullets. Oh yeah, and, and I wouldn't it's, say the mullet's ever been accepted, but it keeps showing up. 
yeah they just keep showing up so no uh, <clears throat> the thing is the students are they got mullets and short shorts so it's they're really whoa yeah i Hey, it's 2022, man. You do you. I've got one on my basketball team. More power to him, I guess. Uh, Warrior, if anyone wore a mullet in that, I would immediately lose all credibility with that film because I just, none of those characters could could handle it. Anybody in Anchorman <laughs> put a mullet on and it fits. So Anchorman. <laughs> I can't argue that. Cameron, what do you think? Which one uh, looks better with the mullet? Anchorman or Warrior? Yeah, I'm I'm uh whenever I picture a mullet, I think of, you know, a carny type. You know, he's he's working the Ferris wheel at the Tri-County Fair. And uh, you know, he's bouncing around from from week to week and you know, he's he's always half drunk. Um which you know, is, is kind of a point for, for warrior, but I, I think we would all agree that they were more prevalent in the seventies and eighties than they are circa 2010 or whenever warrior came out. Um, it's, it's hard to look tough with a mullet. I mean, you can be shirtless and half drunk with a couple of teeth missing and have a, have that look going for you but i think this is a pretty easy one anchorman anchorman sweeps warrior jake no response required unless you'd uh unless well, you had something that that you were hoping to say there if it please the court please there approach are, the bench mr ryan it's not that hard Ryan's to look up ufc fighter with mullet and find a pretty solid <laughs> list so <laughs> I mean, there's a whole article about a guy called the man with the mullet, Aaron Jeffrey. Let's go. And there's a list of like the best UFC fighters with a mullet. I mean, it's I, maybe this is a down deal, but I'm picking warrior in, in this case for mullet. So that's well that's said. All. Yeah, Eric just it, 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 the whole it, thing, and then Jake. It just can be my descent, around, but uh, yeah, it makes all the sense in the world that most <laughs> characters in Warrior are going to be rocking a mullet at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Ooh. All right, Jake. Uh, we're going to start with you. Well, actually, that's that's it. Anchorman, number one seed, makes it to the championship game. Over on the other the other half of the Pulp Fiction four, Ferris Bueller's Day Off versus Office Space. Two movies that have a lot to say about life and how to handle life and what to do and what's important and what's not important. Jacob Bryan, since you got cut out of the last question, uh, which of these two movies, Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Office Space, has better life advice? Man, I, I think I'm going to go with office space because i think that's kind of um and keep forgetting his name ron livingston's character's name uh but that's kind of the whole arc of the movie is he's having this midlife crisis he's at a job that he hates he doesn't want to be part of it anymore he's too stressed out which is a big part of the whole starting thing um you know and, and he has to go through this well maybe i just won't care and then he does that for a while. And then, you know, he tries to find this balance. And, and so do his co-workers and his friends. And I think you can look at that. And although much of it is ridiculous, you can say, especially as a middle-aged man myself, and say, yeah, I, I can see that. And I can learn from that. And so, yeah, I'm going to go off the space. All right, got you. Cameron Lehman, which movie has better life advice? Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Office Space? Better life advice. And they're both um, deep in life advice, certainly. So, yeah. Yeah, I, gosh. I, on one hand, I really admire people that work very hard, you know, um, people that 
necessarily aren't the smartest or not the most well-educated or didn't come from the right side of the tracks and just kind of will themselves into working hard um, and, and success. On the other hand, I really admire balance. And, um, you know, when, when Barry Sanders, for instance, left uh, the NFL on his own terms and just said, you know, I've had a great career. I'm going to step back. I've got another life after football. Um, yeah, that, that balance and just being in control. Um, we don't know what kind of student Ferris Bueller was. We don't know what he ended up doing. Um, but that kind of charisma and that kind of balance in life, he's going places, right? You know, he may not be an honor student, but gosh, that guy knows how to have a good time. And I bet you he can figure out how to succeed in life. So um, Ferris Bueller has better life advice. Hey, you know what they say? All the A students will end up working for the C students. I think Ferris is, uh, I think he's the cover boy for that one. Hey, if I could talk about Barry Sanders for a sec. I don't know if he gave up on the NFL. He gave up on the Detroit Lions, which <laughs> there's a long list of fantastic players that have done yeah. exactly that. He got tired of going four and 12 every year. You're right. Yeah, much like Megatron. And I mean, mm -hmm. Stafford, Stafford. you would have just wasted away out there. Yeah. So. Good call. All right, Eric, what do you think? Which movie has better life advice? Ferris Bueller's I, Day Off or Office Space? If you're 17 years old, Ferris Bueller's Day Off has a lot of great life advice for how to handle the next two, three years of your life. You know, you know, stop for a moment and smell the roses, all that kind of stuff. Enjoy things, have fun. Uh, but Office Space... For somebody who's north of 23 and wants to make life the best and have meaning, uh, you know, you're not going to find it in a cubicle. You need to make sure that what you're doing is something that you enjoy and brings you meaning and brings you, you know, the feeling that you're contributing to something greater than yourself. Um, I got to kind of go with office space. Um because I think Ron Livingston's character, his kind of approach, you know, he ends up doing construction. There's nothing glorious in doing construction, except yeah, that but, he's, but, but, he's but, happy but, with the sun on his back and he's, he's I, doing I, good I, work. And I normally don't debate the panelists, but before he gets into construction, he tries to steal a bunch of money from his employer <laughs> and ends up burning the company down. So it's yes. not like he's, uh, he's out saving starving kids in the Sudan. I mean, that's, that's really one where you want to hang your hat, Eric. I, 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 you know, he learned his lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I think office space is, is a, has better life advice in general, in terms of how you approach work and approach your coworkers. You he have barely to work stayed out of prison. He stayed out Did of he, prison. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Jeff here. Did he steal hundreds of thousands of dollars from the company? Of course. Of course, but maybe it's okay because he did try to give the money back. Yes. And then Milton See? put it down. See? Yeah, he tried to give it back. He knew what he had done was wrong before he was found out about it. And and, and what did Ferris it. do wrong? What did Ferris do wrong? He Who did stole Ferris his hurt? friend's car, his friend's <laughs> dad's car. Who did Ferris hurt? But ultimately, that his set sister. Cameron free. Exactly. That that was That's a good part in Cameron's relationship with his father. Yeah, you're going to spend more of your life <laughs> working and being an employee or working a job than you will be doing what Ferris Bueller is doing. You have to you have to figure those things out. And I think Office Space gives better advice. I'm debating not giving you any points. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I probably have to, and, and, and I will, but there's an asterisk next to it. <laughs> that, that point has an asterisk next to it. Uh, All right, Eric, we're going to start with you, and no, you cannot change your answer later. Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Office Space, which movie would be a better energy drink? You want a big can of Ferris Bueller's Day Off or you want 16 ounces of office space to get you through the three o'clock doldrums? <laughs> if 
I was working in a cubicle in Intertrode, at Intertrode, and I needed to stay awake through the 3 p.m. shift to What's Intertrode? File. Isn't what, that what, the company's it, it, it name? Office space? Intertech. No, there was an Intertrode at the end. Penetrode. Was Penetrode. The I think Intertrode is, called a, is, a, is a creature in Star Wars, the Intertrode. So, so if I'm working there and I have to fill out my, my TPS reports and and I need to get through and I have two energy drinks in front of me, one that is called office space and has all the energy of the office that I'm working in and one that's Ferris Bueller's Day Off and harkens me back to being 18 and driving a fast car with my friend and my girlfriend. I'm drinking Ferris Bueller's Day Off because that'll get me through the end of the day. All right, Cameron Lehman, what do you think? Which one makes a better energy drink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Office Space? So I'm not a big energy drink guy. I've gone on record as saying they just taste like cancer. Every time you drink them, they just are nasty. And, um, you know, my daily life, you know, I'm not getting ready to do base jumping off of a 200-story building. I am trying to push through the last two hours of my day and, you know, finish these pesky emails. So, you know, I'm not going to kill an ant with a sledgehammer here. I need a little boost to my day. If, if coffee's not available and you're telling me I got to choose the office space energy drink or the Ferris Bueller energy drink, office space, I want to be able to go to sleep at 11 o'clock. That's a hell of an energy drink that gives you eight minutes of power to get through that next email. All right. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the advertising <laughs> campaign for that one. Jake, I, I what do don't you live a real long uh, minute energy. Right. You will like diametrically <laughs> opposed <laughs> answers. You will be able to take a nap when you're done with this. Can. Right. Well, what did you <laughs> pick? <laughs> Eric, what did you pick? Ferris Bueller's day off. Joe's okay. Ferris. Give me the energy of a 17 year old. Yeah. And Cameron yeah, just needs to that. fight off a nap for another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you put your tongue on a 9 volt battery, Cameron, that might do it for you. Man, there you go. Try that Man. Hold on, Cameron. Cameron, Cameron, do you remember at your stud party, we were, it was like 8.30 and you and I no, were starting to, to drift off and Josh and Jake are like, we're headed out. And we're like, we don't know if we can make it. And Josh just opens up the coffee. He's like, chew on the coffee grounds. And no, we did. That was that was my idea because I had just your watched idea? some special forces show no, yeah, on when... Discovery. <laughs> That's right. And they were in Hell Week. And yeah, he so, just chewed on coffee grounds and it worked. got him through Hell Week. Yeah. Well, yeah. we did that, and then Josh gave you propel, propel uh -huh. energy, vitamin water. And that then we went down to up. that bar. We went down to that bar and we all ate cotton candy. And then the rest yeah. of the night was glorious. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are several steps to that recovery for you guys because but but in fairness i think we we went golfing we then we golfing. went out to the pool and drank for four hours and then we went to go take a shower and then we were going out so yeah it was desperate times call for desperate measures yeah but it was a great night yeah it was great weekend all right jake if you're you're up to the plate here what do you think <laughs> So I was going through things from both movies that I think would sound good as an energy drink. And the first, the, the two that I came up with, the one from Office Space it was Tchotchkes, which is the restaurant that uh, Jennifer Aniston worked at, or Joanna is her character. So Tchotchkes um, is possible energy drink. Uh, but for some reason, and maybe it's because it's essentially always spoken in as, as this way in its language Takashin, i think would be a great energy drink even though it just means thank you but it, i think it would be a great energy drink so i'm going to go ferris bueller based on mm. that okay all right tied up uh, you know what i'm surprised didn't come up there is case of the mondays because you were making fun ooh. of me jeff on the how you how you market the office space energy drink i definitely think that you could incorporate do you have a case of the Mondays? Try this. That's a good point. A That's totally a good redeemed point. redeemed yourself. I like that. Okay. Cameron, because of that, we're going to start with you. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Office Space? 
Which movie does the Supreme Court watch at a team building event? <laughs> we got we got nine Supreme Court justices. Our current nine, RBG's gone. It's time for a team building event. Roberts is going to whip one out. Which one is it? Yeah, there are some. Uh, you know the the Supreme Court has become very politicized, obviously, and. Um, you know, very partisan, like all politics nowadays. And, you know, who's going to vote how on Roe versus Wade and that kind of thing. And it's, it's become really ugly and, and tooth and nail. Um, if I'm doing a team building event, I want to bring everybody together. I want something that is a feel good movie. Um, but yeah, and I've, I've said this before is when I, when I think of far left wing, liberal, you know, crazy left wingers, I think of Ferris Bueller's sister. And I don't, I don't know why, it's just that image just keeps coming up in my head. Um, office space is maybe a little less controversial. Um, I don't, I don't recall anything offhand that's really shocking, um, that's going to polarize everybody. And, and I, don't, I don't like this answer. Um, if, if either of you, Jake or Eric, can, can talk me out of this answer, I'm definitely open to it. But let's put office space as a placeholder there, because I, I understand how big of a moment this is. And I don't this is a tentative that. vote? You're tentative this is a, This is an in-pencil vote here. In, I, I don't know okay. if I can do that, uh, Judge Peterson, but like I said, I don't feel strongly. Well, I've already got one point in this round with an asterisk next to it, so um, <laughs> I guess I'm going to go ahead and do a dotted line for office space on that one. We're going to go to Eric, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. What? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, which which movie does the Supreme Court watch at a team building event? Is it going to be Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the '80s classic, or Office Space? I think it is Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and here's why: most of our justices are at the youngest in their late 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, Breyer's gone, especially. Yeah, they're going to have a greater connection with Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So if they wanted a team building thing, they wanted something that they can all connect with. It's going to be Ferris Bueller's Day Off. They might enjoy Office Space. They may have seen it, but it's less connected to their young life, kind of their their uh, formative moments in their life than Ferris Bueller's Day Off is. And that's the kind of thing you can connect with people over. All right, Jacob, what do you think? Which movie does watch at a team building event? Is it Ferris right, or so Ron it's a, Livingston? It's a team building event. And I think that's the key here is if they were just say, well, let's just go watch a movie. Yeah, you're probably right. Ferris Bueller's Day Off would resonate because they're all, that would be an era that they grew up in. Um, but it's not just watching a movie. It's a team building event. And so the great part about office space is how frustrated they get with the culture of the office, right? And how, you know, how upset they are about PC load letter. Hey, can you fix the cover sheet on the memo? And, and the, did you get the memo for the TPS report and all that stuff? And that, that have that frustration. And eventually they take that frustration out on the copier. And they all do it walking slowly to damn, it feels good to be a gangster. And so what you need to do is envision yourself. You watch that movie and you're like, all right. Now we're going to go to one of those rooms where you can just smash stuff and get it all out. You don't have to worry about the politics of it. Everybody gets a hammer or a bat and they just beat the crap out of whatever office materials that they want. And they do it all slow-mo. Their robes look amazing. Like one of their the clerks. Glowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beat the clerk up. I'm tired of your nonsense. I don't care. But they're just like, you know, we're not talking about dissenting opinions here. We're not talking about the upcoming cases. We're just getting it all out. And I think, office space lends itself to that for the Supreme Court. So office space is my pick. 
All right, so circling back around to Cameron. Uh, Cameron, I have an asterisk and a dotted line under office space, which is currently up five to four. You asked for a chance to revisit. Um, you reluctantly cast a vote for office space the first time around. Do you want to change that? Um, In very Supreme Court fashion, I mean, this is, this is going to be a 5-4 decision along, maybe not even along party lines. I don't know. This is... I, I heard both sides of the argument. Um, you know, I, I heard for and uh, against. And, and after a tremendous amount of deliberation, um, it is my opinion that office space should get my vote. Love okay, it. so office wow. space limped across, technically won this like four and a half to four. So we're going to throw an extra question in here. This okay. is going to be winner take all. Um, I like it. You sure Jeff's just not happy with the results? Is that what's no, going I, I How like dare this is you, good. Sir. This remains I... all that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and your answer has to be 20 seconds or less. Eric, we're starting okay. with you. Which movie would you call to pick you up from jail? Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Office Space? the clock's ticking office space ferris bueller is going to get distracted on his way to me <laughs> right jake jake who's picking you up from office jail? space also has the money because he stole it they actually bail you out uh i'm gonna stick it to cameron uh i'm gonna pick ferris bueller because i think ferris bueller for all his faults he's a great friend above all yeah, he'd get you out of jail for free, probably. All right, Cameron, it's all on you. Who's picking you up from jail? Office space or Ferris Bueller's day off? Yeah, it, office space is is kind of that hopeless, I give up, you know, nothing, you know, nothing's meaningful type thing. That's just not a good look, especially after jail. You know, you can just kind of eh, <laughs> whatever, or you can learn from it, um, you know, and, and say, yeah, you know, I might have a, a little bit of dirt on my record but five seconds you know, i'm gonna have a good time and i'm gonna learn from it but you know i'm i'm gonna put that in Three, my past and move on to ferris bueller all right ferris in a highly Got controversial it. round yeah. yeah so all right yeah. there might have been punches thrown at the end of that one that's, that's a huge asterisk it's like the Wisconsin right there. Michigan game. <laughs> no, yeah, my score sheet. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a mess on that one. That was uh that wow. was tough. But uh all right. This gets down to all the marbles. The uh the final of all finals, Anchorman, a one seed out of the west, comes up against Ferris Bueller's day off, a two seed out of the east. Eric Hoffman, we're starting with you. Which one would be a better inspiration for a Banksy? Banksy. I'm going to assume that that you know what that means. I'm yes. Give Cameron a minute to, to, to Google this. And uh, so anyhow, Eric, we're going to start with you. Anchorman or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? You know, his, his uh, I'm not sure what kind of style his, his graffiti is, but it's kind of minimalist, right? But I think when I, initially when I come to this, the, the, the scene he's going to paint on the wall of a of a bank is going to be Ferris Bueller singing Don Shane on the, the float. That's going to be the Banksy right there. Is he going to have like some antler horns or is he going to have money coming out of his armpits or something? I mean, there's, there's always some little curveball, right? Yeah. I don't know what the curveball is. Okay. The, cur the curveball is Ferris Bueller on a float on the side of a bank. I like it. All right, Eric, what do you think? Or not Eric. I'm sorry, Jacob. What do you think? Ferris Bueller's day off or Anchorman? Which would be better inspiration for a Banksy? Uh, I think we can, with Anchorman, you can do a minimalist where you have uh, kind of silhouettes of the crew. Uh, and then he could do some dumb commentary on the media i guess because art is political so that's good that, that's mm. that's my random thought is is that he could make some sort of 
you know, that political or social commentary on the media and stuff like that with Anchorman. So that'd be my pick. Anchorman. All right, Cameron, you've looked up some Banksies. You've seen his style. Which of these films do you think makes a better inspiration for a Banksy? Yeah. So just time to hit the pause button and educate all our <laughs> listeners, because I totally knew this off the top of my head, what a Banksy was and, and all of that. But uh, for everyone else, you're going to share it. Yeah, That's exactly. Really I just I just want to super generous drop drop some knowledge on everybody. Uh, Banksy is a pseudonymous 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 england based street artist political activist and film director whose real name and identity remain unconfirmed Ooh. all right so i i like what jake said there um art is very political and you know i'll you a picture says a thousand words and the media is very political as well. So you can plaster up a photo of Ron Burgundy, you know, in his underwear, jumping off the diving board at the party. Um, the very many faces of Ron Burgundy. Um, he's in a glass case of emotion sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, he's, he's beautifully manicuring his mustache times i mean the very many faces of ron burgundy would be perfect as a banksy fun fact there were some faux banksies in avengers age of ultron in sokovia early in the movie that's uh there are some shots of tony stark like or four or five iron man along there mm -hmm. and then all these dollar signs around him good call all right um we got anchorman over ferris two to one um where do we go next? Jacob, which one is most likely to narc? They, they, they know what you've done. They know what's in your locker. One of these two is going to tell the school security about what's going on. Is it going to be Anchorman or is it going to be Ferris Bueller? It's day off. I, I think the whole thing with the news team is they have this code with each other and they don't want to betray each other. And, and they actually work to keep Veronica out and to force her to quit or be fired through much of the movie um, in, in loyalty to Ron. And then when Ron goes through his depression after losing Baxter and then getting fired and then his catharsis he blows the conch shell and reassembles the news team and they're there for him so I think the news team would not narc and while I, I like Ferris he's a bit of a he's kind of chaotic good he's a good guy but he's out there and Cameron looks like a guy that would crack under some pressure so I, I think I got to go with Anchorman on this one Gotcha. Eric Hoffman, what do you think? Who's going to narc? Is it going to be Anchorman or is it going to be Ferris Bueller's Day Off? So who's getting the point? The one who narcs? Yeah. In that case, uh, I, I think Jake made a good point. When we're talking about the film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off has more holes in it for narking ability. Cameron, who would crack under pressure. Ferris Bueller's sister, who would give up her own flesh and blood in an instant. Mm -hmm. um, the crew at Anchorman, or the crew at the, the news station, they've got your back. So it's going to be Ferris Bueller. Okay, and Jake, just to clarify, you said you said Ferris is going to narc. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, that's right. It's my bad. I wrote down the wrong. Okay, so we got Ferris three to two. Uh, Cameron, what do you think? Who's going to narc? So most likely to narc is the anchor man and, and the cast from the anchor man. And here's why. Um, Ferris and his girlfriend. What's, what's the girlfriend's name? I can't remember. Anyway, um, Ferris and his girlfriend, although that is a high school love, you just get the sense that is built to last. You know, she looks at Ferris with such an admiration, not an unhealthy ad admiration, that's just a, a really solid relationship. They're going somewhere. 
And there's a reason that you can't testify against your spouse in a court of law. You know, that's a, that's a tie that cannot be broken. Um, yes, loyalty between friends and a news team is, is great, but a, a marriage is sacred. And I'm, I'm taking a couple leaps here that, that they're going to end up getting married, but I think they're on the fast track to getting married. married. Um, Anchorman is more likely to narc than Ferris Bueller. All right, gentlemen, we're, uh, we're three to three here as far as I can tell. We're going uh, clockwise, starting upper left on my screen. It's for all the marbles. Eric Hoffman, Anchorman or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Which movie would you rather adopt into your family traditions? <laughs> it has to be one with some staying power, like something you can always come back to. And I think there's a lot of good stuff in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But as this group has proved over the last two months that we've been doing this, this bracket, the quotes from Anchorman just keep flowing. And so Anchorman as a tradition is, is on more solid ground. So Anchorman. Again, into your family traditions. Yeah. All right, anchor man, Jacob. What do you think? Well, it's interesting because one of the questions we had for Ferris Bueller's Day Off was when it was against, um, I think it was Hacksaw Ridge. We said, "Which one would you rather have as a holiday?" And we eventually chose Ferris Bueller's Day Off because of the things you can do during that day. Um, mm. However, I agree with Eric. I think the the quotability of Anchorman is so good. It, it kind of reminds me of a Christmas story. You know, where you shoot your eye out, kid, and the Red Rider BB gun and Black Bart, you know, and all that stuff. And that for me growing up became a family tradition to watch during Christmas time. And so I don't know when I would watch this with my family, but if there was a day <laughs> or a year where we're like, let's watch Anchorman. I think that would be incredible. You know, and we can all, you know, get many leather bound books and um, go have an important announcement before we jump into the pool. And like, I think there's a lot of fun you can have with that. That could make it an annual tradition. So I, uh, I guess I'm going to go Anchorman here. Yeah. All right. Um, Anchorman just won this thing, but Cameron, uh, did, did you have anything different or anything you want yeah. to say about this question i'm with you guys like i i knew early on we can go back into the record books and say and and find it but i knew anchor man was going to do well um yes it's a number one seed i didn't really go out on a limb by by saying that but it's just so dang quotable so memorable um a lot of different situations and scenarios i think it lent itself to a lot of the questions you don't have to work really hard or twist it up that much um to arrive at anchorman so i think it's fitting that that's our champion and yeah man you can compare anchorman to a lot of family situations or remember that time and again just like it lends itself to the questions you can work it into a family conversation pretty well. So is it safe to say that when there's a dad bod history slumber party, we're going to be watching Anchorman? Ooh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good I'm call. probably going to put it on tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the road tomorrow for a little bit. I got to do some packing. I'm going to have Anchorman on in the background. It's mm, going to be beautiful. It. You don't even speak Spanish. I'm impressed. Oh, you know, I don't speak Spanish, Spanish. <laughs> All right, the whole hey, of G's. So listen, this is a lot of fun, you guys. Uh, Anchorman coming out number one. No surprise. There were a lot of surprises in today's stuff. Honestly, I think the fact that Office Space made it to the final four and had the you know the Russian judges step in at the last minute and and dispute the results <laughs> that was that was something else. Um, this was this was a good one, man. I I hope Janice likes it. 
And it's poetic too. justice too, because it would have been a little bit iffy, you know, in the final four, we had that controversy of, of Ferris Bueller kind of pogo sticking over office space. This is the way it should be poetic justice that anchorman, it didn't matter. That's why they play the game ball. Don't lie. Yep. Well, yeah. And we had five number one seeds in the sweet 16 candles and only one of them made it through to the end game eight. And that was anchor. Wow. wow. And I do actually have a special breaking news announcement. Uh, <laughs> Terrence Capitans, who's been our guest a few times, and actually I think he did our nineties draft. Uh, welcomed this past week, his first child, a beautiful baby girl. Um, so he is now officially a dad um so congratulations terrence Just congratulations to congratulations that's awesome man good deal all right eric Jake, your congratulations seemed a little unenthusiastic what was that mine i yeah. gave two thumbs up i said oh, my, my wording okay. yeah yeah the congratulations was a little softer i'm sorry so congratulations <laughs> there we go <laughs> so. awesome well there we go there you have it anchorman at the top where he belongs. So Excellent. that's all we got for uh, this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the whole series and make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and uh, sign it off from Dadbot History. I'm Jake, got Eric, Jeff, and Cameron, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.